Hi folks, welcome back. Figured I'd do this outdoors for a change. Today I want to take a look at a paper that provides us a very elegant and beautiful example of functional programming. This paper takes a look at how to express the computation for the Mandelbrot fractal set. And it does this in Haskell in maybe 15 or 20 lines of code. And you'll see how it's very elegant and beautiful. It's the perfect antidote to all the verbosity of a language like Java with all its factories and juice modules and whatnot. So let's start by asking what is a fractal? At a very basic level, a fractal or at least an image of a fractal is just a collection of points. Now the original equations for fractals are expressed in terms of complex numbers. So a fractal is really a set of complex numbers, but you can map them to x, y coordinates on the two-dimensional plane. I don't mean for this video to go in depth into the mathematics of fractals, but rather on how to express their computation in a programming language. But just as basic background, the idea behind the Mandelbrot set is that we will construct a sequence of complex numbers which is formed by repeatedly applying the same function on a starting point. In this case, the function is for two points on the complex plane z and p, z squared plus p. So you fix p and then for each point on the plane z, you construct the sequence that comes from repeatedly applying z squared plus p on its own result. So you get the sequence of complex numbers. And a point is in the Mandelbrot set if the sequence of numbers does not diverge. In other words, if the sequence of numbers stays somewhat close to the origin. You can express this pretty succinctly by writing out the function next and then constructing a sequence of points that are formed by iterating this next function on a given point, keeping one of those points fixed. Now, like I said, for each of these sequences, we want to see if it stays close to the origin or if it diverges and goes far away from the origin. So let's just say we want these points to be within a distance 10 of the origin. And like we said before, a point is in the Mandelbrot set if all the points in the sequence are close to the origin. You can express this notion of a sequence of points staying close to the origin pretty easily in Haskell. But the problem with this expression is that it might be non-terminating. How many points are you going to look at before you determine that all the points are close enough? So you do the next best thing, which is to take an approximation. You take the first n points in the sequence and then check if those n points in the sequence are close enough to the origin. And this expression tells you if for any given point p on the complex plane, the point is in the Mandelbrot set or not. Now, in most renderings of the Mandelbrot set, we've seen it being pretty colorful. And the way they do that is to see how many points it takes to escape away from the origin and then assign a color to the point based on that. So we can take a palette of colors, which is n, which was the same number that we used in our approximation, and see how many steps it takes for these points to escape away from the origin and then assign a color based on that. The striking thing I want to note about all this code is just how succinct it is and how close it is to the problem we're trying to solve without any unnecessary verbosity or ceremony. Note that so far we haven't even said anything about images or pixels. We've just mathematically described a way to determine if a point in the 2D plane is in the Mandelbrot set or not. 
And once we've done all this, we can finally take the last step of taking these points and rendering them out as pixels. In this case, I found a wonderful GitHub repository that takes the code from this very paper and then uses the Haskell Gloss library to render it out to the screen. So that was, I hope, a beautiful and elegant example of how you can use functional programming to express the idea of how we compute fractals. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.